Hi guys, um, I thought I'd make a video about hair transplants, um, maybe just to help you if you're thinking of having one or just to answer questions you might have. Um, as you can see I had mine done on Monday the 17th of December, it's now Wednesday the 19th. Um, I flew out on the Sunday, um, had the transplant on the Monday and the checkup on the Tuesday and flew home Tuesday afternoon. Um, I chose to have mine done in Istanbul, Turkey because um, a lot of people fly out there and it's a lot cheaper than what is in the UK. I'd never be able to afford one in the UK um, so yeah I chose Turkey. Um, I decided to go with a clinic called Dr Sinek Clinic um, there's a website on Facebook called the Hair Loss Crusaders um, and if it wasn't for that website I probably would never have even considered Turkey um, but a lot of the guys on there have had their transplants done in Turkey and some of their results are amazing so I thought yeah I'd read up on it um, the first time I looked on that website was probably around November 2017 so I mean it wasn't a quick decision I've been reading and studying about it for a long long time um, and asking questions and um, then I chose a company called Cuno Medical so you basically send them photos of like the front of your face um, the sides, the top of your head and the back um, and then they will come back with um, quotes for the prices um, for different clinics. Um, if you've got one in mind you can tell them and they'll come back with a price. Um, the reason I chose to use them rather than going direct to the clinic was because they have like English speaking WhatsApp users so you can get in touch quite easily. Um, but then when you fly out there you also get a number, a WhatsApp number direct with the clinic and with English speaking people so they also can help you straight away um, if you have any problems. Um, I flew out, like I said, Sunday morning, flew out on British Airways from Heathrow, so drove up to Heathrow, parked the car, straight round to Terminal 5, um, had a bit of breakfast flew out, took about three and a half hours. Um, when you get to Turkey you'll have um, you'll need a visa um, and I think recently they've just changed the rules so you're, you can't buy them at the airport I was told so you have to do an e-visa. These are about $20. Um, make sure you go to the correct website if there's one charging you like 60 or 70 dollars then they're doing it for you and you're basically being ripped off so don't go to one that's charging you that much just go to one the, the standard one that charges you 20 dollars you'll probably get um, the visa issued in about three or four minutes they just email you and then you can just download it um, I would definitely print it off um, and keep it with your passport when I actually flew out to Turkey I found that there was a visa desk and I think they probably were still selling them but I'm not sure if they're more expensive um, and also the queue to get through the passport um, security was over an hour it was the longest queue I've ever seen it was like a theme park ride um, and yeah you just want to sort of limit the hassle of when you get there so definitely get a e-visa before you go um, but saying that, when I got to security, the girl behind the desk didn't even look at the visa. She just looked at my passport and said, yeah, go through. Um, so yeah, I flew out there with my girlfriend. Um, you can take people with you if you've got a mate you want to go with for moral support or if they want to get their hair done at the same time. I think you probably get a discount if there's two of you. Um, for me it was 10 euros per day extra to take my girlfriend um, and you just pay that directly to the hotel I think that was probably to cover the breakfast um, so when you get there you go through security um, collect your bags if you've um, checked any in on the way out because I was only there two nights I had like a small case 
that you can put inside the plane um, in the cabin. I didn't put anything in the hold because BA wanted quite a lot more. I think it's about 60 quid more to put a bag in the hold. Um, so I didn't do that on the way out. But on the way back, you should get hold luggage allowance. And it's cheaper to do it when you book your tickets because uh, I think it was 20 quid more for me to do that on the way back. It was cheaper. Um, and you, you need hold luggage because the shampoos they give you are over 100 millilitres. So otherwise, if you don't, and you try and take it through in your hand luggage, you might they might just throw it in the bin, um, and you don't want to waste that. So yeah, just get the hold luggage for the way back. Um, but yeah, when you get through security, you go um, turned right, and then we had to go to a Vodafone stand, and opposite there, there was like a transport desk that did taxis, um, tours, and that sort of thing. You go in there and they are kind of expecting you anyway. Um, you tell them what clinic you're going to and they know what hotel you need to go to. So they'll sort um, the ride out for you. The only thing I found a bit weird is they photograph with their phone your passport and then they send that to the hospital. So the hospital know you've arrived, um, which is okay, but it's just a bit weird someone photographing with their phone your passport. Um, yeah, there's also next door, there was a pharmacy and they sell things like um, Expecia and um, pills like that that are, I'll speak about later, but they were sort of a lot cheaper than what it is in the UK. Um, but yeah, the package I bought was from through Cuno Medical. Um, as I said, it was with Dr. Sinek at uh, Kolen Hospital in Istanbul. Um, Istanbul is like the hair transplant capital of the world. There's so many people there all the time getting it done. You'll see so many people going around with these headbands on. Um, and yeah, I got there Sunday afternoon. Um, everything, you, you buy a package, so you basically the hotel was included for two nights. Um, your taxi from the airport to the hotel and back and the hotel to the clinic and back and the checkup the next day, it's all included. Everything's included. The only thing you don't get that's not included is the flights. Um, you had to pay extra. Mine was 139 pounds and that included the luggage in the hold on the way back. Um, I booked mine in April and obviously I've only had it done in December because I needed time to save up for the operation. My girlfriend booked her flight couple of months ago and I think it was 189 so it's a bit dearer the closer you get to it um, so yeah when we got to the airport we went into this little tour office place and sat down for five minutes then another guy came round took us to the multi-story car park where there was um, a lot of taxis they're like Mercedes minivans so you can get like six people in um, there was only me and my girlfriend but yeah they take you straight off to the hotel took about 30 minutes. Istanbul is massive, it was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be um, and there's a lot of traffic. Um, so yeah we got to the hotel, checked in, um, you tell them you're there for the hair transplant, they already know anyway um, and they just said can we have 20 euros to cover the breakfast basically so paid that had it was like a four or five star hotel, a lovely hotel. Um, I think it was called the Grand Siva here. Um, it's what they use because it is literally just across the road from the hospital. Um, I think they also use the Hilton, which was just around the corner, but I think you had to pay a supplement for that. Um, but the hotel was fine, it was massive. Um, the only weird thing is, for, for coming from England, I've never been in a hotel before where you have to go through metal detectors every time you go in. Um, but that was the same for all the hotels out there. Um, so I arrived Sunday evening, had a swim in the swimming pool. So yeah, if you want to take your swimming stuff. Um, the only weird thing as well, you, when you, I don't know if it's in all of them, but in the hotel we stayed in, Guys and girls have to wear swimming hats in the swimming pool, so we had to buy a swimming cap each when we were out there. Um, but yeah, the pool was fine, and they had like a sauna, so we went in the sauna. Um, they have separate men and women's saunas. Um, 
then went into the restaurant and had like I think some of the most expensive stuff on the menu was still pretty cheap I mean we had a meal and it was the top kebabs um, all sort of done with yoga all really nicely presented and it was quite a nice restaurant um, and I think altogether it came to about 25 pounds um, that was including drinks as well um, I didn't drink alcohol because you're not supposed to drink alcohol for at least three days before your operation and some people say a week after and some people say two weeks after um, so I've not been drinking alcohol um, but yeah so you, you then I went out for a little walk just around and spotted the hospital straight across the road you could easily just walk there if you wanted to but um, we took the taxi because um, it's included basically go in you feel fine obviously coming back you're probably better to get the taxi because it's you just feel a little bit sort of lightheaded um, but yeah the next so went to bed the next morning you have to get up quite early and the one thing is they said the breakfast was going to be at seven o'clock and the breakfast is included in the hotel price um, but we then I got um, I had a letter before saying my pickup would have been um, seven o'clock in the morning and I thought well I'm not gonna have time for breakfast but then the guy said well breakfast is usually sort of 6 30 and I found I think it's seven maybe at the weekends but it's 6 30 so I got up early on the, the Monday to have some breakfast because you definitely need to have breakfast before some people say eat sort of fatty foods because it sort of thickens the blood or something but I just had regular breakfast it's buffet breakfast it's fine um, my advice would be don't drink too much coffee or orange juice because otherwise you'll be needing to go to the toilet all the time when you're having your operation. Right, so yeah, after breakfast, um, you go to um, the reception area and there's some other guys waiting around there um, and they were both having the operation as well. So there was three of us all together. The taxi guy comes down, picks you up, you get in a taxi, um, I was the only English guy there, the other two were Spanish, um, go up to the hospital, which is like I said just up the road, um, then you're met in reception by um, a couple of ladies that were there and they take you downstairs to the basement um, and that was down there you get to meet the doctor, Dr Sinek, um, you have your blood test taken um, and also they photograph you your sort of before shots they do take a lot of photographs like before during and after the operation um, so that was my first time meeting Dr Sinek while you're doing meeting the doctor the other guys were getting their blood done or the photos done and you just kind of swap around um, so when I met Dr Sinek he's a nice guy um, he was sort of checks your hair over, sort of combs it and says sort of spots areas that he would like to improve on so basically I was receding at the front a little bit, you can see where they've done it at the front um, but that didn't bother me too much, my main thing was the bald spot at the back um, it's been for about eight years now it started and it's sort of getting slightly bigger um, and it it just did my head in it was really annoying I've used hair fibers which if you don't know what they are just look up on Amazon I've been buying them for years now it's just like stuff you can sprinkle onto your hair you choose the same hair color as you got it's just like dust that statically sticks to your hair so it makes your hair look fill, filled out and um, people for years haven't even realized I've had a bald spot because I've basically been covering it every time um, I've been using those for years but I get a bit fed up with it um, if you stay in a hotel or something they get on the pillow and stuff like that and they're just a bit annoying um, but they are very good if you don't want to have an operation then yeah check those out um, like I say I've been using them for years and people can't even tell I've had a bald spot um, but yeah so we I met the doctor um, he one thing he did say to me is have you got any photos of what you look like sort of 10 years ago and I'd never been told to bring any of these and I'd, it's one thing I didn't even think of 
Um, but luckily on my phone I had like a photo on, um, I think it was on Twitter or something from about 15 years ago. So I showed him what my hair used to look like. Um, so yeah, maybe get a photo of yourself on your phone or, or bring a photo with you of what you used to look like. Um, so he said, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, we can do the bald spot at the back and we can bring your hair forward a little bit. At the very front of my head, there was a few little hairs right sort of there, so you could see where the hairline used to be. So where it had receded a bit, he said, yeah, he can bring it forward. Um, so I was happy with that. So while your hair is still long, that's another thing. They shave your hair off completely, like you can see. Um, I've never had my hair shaved this short. Normally I have grade two on the sides and back and about five or six on top. Um, so if I was you, I mean, I was worrying, thinking if I cut it just before I go, are they going to be able to get the grafts out? But they shave it off anyway. So whether you go in completely shaved, it doesn't really matter. But I would advise that you have a bit of hair there so that he can see what direction it's combed in and that sort of thing, just to give him an idea of what your hair normally is like. Um, and also they've taken it from under my beard, I don't know if you can see there. That's another reason why I chose Dr. Sinek, because he's one of the ones who can do beard hair and chest hair um, if need be. They didn't do any of my chest, they just did it from under the beard. Um, the reason being, he said that I would need between three and three and a half thousand grafts, he thought, um, and on the side and the back of my hair, head sorry it's always I thought it was like fine because it's you know I've got no bald spots on the side or the back but he said the hair was quite thin so he'd like some beard hair to sort of fill it out a bit um, which is obviously a bit wirier the hair and it's kind of a bit thicker but um, hopefully it will sort of fill out any gaps um, so I was fine with that so he draws lines with like a it's like a sort of thick sort of crayon -y sort of pen, black pen. Um, he draws round basically the lines and he draws one down the front so it's straight um, of where you're going to um, have the, the transplant hair and he sort of drew one round the bald spot at the back. Um, so when that's on you've still got your sort of hair, long hair. Um, after that if you've got any questions you can ask him. He's very relaxed and sort of very happy about it. One thing is he does different packages. You can have one where his technicians basically do everything. Um, and there's a lot of technicians around because there's three people getting it done in the morning. I think there's three in the afternoon. So basically I'd paid for the package through Kino and I locked it in in April where they were doing a really good price. So I thought I locked it in and basically to book, all you need to do is book your flights because that's proof that you're going there. So you send Kino Medical your flight details um, and then they book. So what you want to do is when you know when you want to go um, make sure you can get the time off work and also if you're in an office job they recommend a week off, if you're in a manual job they recommend like two weeks. Um, I've done mine the week before Christmas because my work gives us Christmas to New Year off anyway so I booked an extra week before so I've got had it done on the Monday because I think the hospital was open Monday to Saturday but because you have to go back the next day for your checkup, I flew out on the Sunday when they're closed, had the operation done on the Monday, and then um, went for my checkup on the Tuesday. So when you've booked it off work, um, well, first of all, it's probably better to contact Kino and just say, can you check that the doctor is available that day when you've chosen where you want to go? So I did that. They said, yeah, he's available that day. I booked the time off work, um, and then I booked my flights, um, and then... Um, sent them to Kino, they send you your confirmation and then they sort of get in touch every now and again. Um, and yeah, you're basically just waiting around till you go. Some people book it and go the next week, some people need a while to save up, some people um, I think you can book up to a year in advance. Um, so yeah, I saw the doctor anyway. Um, next thing, you have to go around and get your blood taken. Some people really don't like having blood taken. Um, I give blood regularly anyway, so it didn't really matter to me. It's it's when you give blood, you, it's like a, a bag full. In 
when you're getting your hair done, it's like a syringe for it. It's literally nothing. Um, so they put, they just take some blood. They do some tests to make sure you haven't got um, hepatitis and things like that. Um, and also they take, um, I think they take the plasma out of it. And I think it's called PRP. They re-inject it into you later because it's supposed to help the hair grow. Um, so when they take your blood, they put like a little um, plastic thing sort of that stays attached to your arm because later on you get attached to a drip when you're actually having the grafts put in. Um, this is nothing to worry about, it doesn't hurt at all. Just be careful when you're sort of having your grafts. Sometimes you have to lie on your front, sometimes on the back. Um, so you don't want to sort of knock it. Um, but yeah, so that was like five minutes, it's really easy. After that, you go into have your photos taken before photos. So there's like a photographer there, and you sit in front of like a white wall, um, and you have um, sort of front, sides, back, um, sort of look up, have the top done. They take loads of photos. Um, and later on, when you're in the operating room, they stick the photos on the wall. So I guess it gives the uh, technicians an idea and the doctor of what what you sort of look like before your hair shaves. Um, so after that, you then get taken right up to the top of the hospital. Obviously, I'm only speaking about my own experience from um, where I went, the clinic I went, Dr. Sinek. Um, other hospitals might do things in different order or completely differently. Um, but yeah, I'm just speaking about my experience. So I went up to the top floor um, where the offices are and the, the operating rooms. Um, I went in, first of all you go in and that's where you pay. Um, I paid on credit card. Because if you pay on credit or debit card, make sure you get a travel one that's that doesn't charge you a fortune in like um, foreign commission fees and stuff like that. And, um, basically mine, there's one called Halifax Clarity Card which is really good because it doesn't charge you for using it abroad. It does charge you if you take cash out of the wall like from an ATM. It doesn't charge you for spending on the card. And I've got another one recently, um, which I don't think is available to anyone. It was because one of my old credit cards ran out, they sent me this new one. And again, it doesn't charge you for using it abroad, but it also gives you 0.5% cash back. So I thought, well, as I'm spending all this money, I might as well get some cash back. So I paid for that. Um, so you, it went through fine. They said make sure you tell your bank before you go in case you have any problems. Um, I took both cards just in case I had a problem with one. Um, I told both of the banks but they said don't worry you don't have to tell us anymore. Um, but yeah it all went through so that was good. Um, then they say do you want the painless anaesthetic? Um, some people, some hospitals include that in the price. Um, my particular one didn't so it was 250 euros more which is quite a lot of money um, but I was quite nervous and because I read stories about the needles and how much they hurt and things like that I thought I'll go for the painless um, this time if I ever needed a second one thinking about it now I probably wouldn't go for it again I probably if it wasn't included then I probably wouldn't pay the extra some people will tolerate pain differently and think it's really bad. Some people, it just isn't that bad at all. Uh, I think the other guys, the Spanish guys that I went up to the hospital with, they didn't have it and they were fine. Um, but yeah, the needles you kind of read horror stories about and I had the painless one, which um, I'll go into more detail in a little bit. Um, but yeah, after that you paid um, like I said, I did pay the extra to have the painless. I then went round and you, it's just like a hairdresser's where you lie back um, over a sink and they shave all your hair off. Um, and also they shaved under my beard because um, they're going to take the beard hair. So that's when you meet your technician and uh, the guy he I had, he was a nice guy. He spoke basic English. Um, so then he takes you round to the operating room which is like a small sort of office it's about the size like a, a dentist's office kind of thing it's just got like a bed like it looks like a massage table kind of thing but it's got electric so it, you can it makes you sit up and down they can control it 
Um, so I went in there. Um, the first thing they do, I was worried because everyone says wear a zip up cardigan. I was wearing like a cardigan like this. Um, they said don't wear t-shirts because obviously you don't want to be pulling things over your head when you've just had it done. So I wore um, this and a t-shirt. It had a really wide neck so I thought if it gets blood on it or whatever I can just cut it off if need be. Um, and I was worried about wearing a hoodie because I thought, or like a, a, a top with a hood, zip up top, because I was thinking, you know, is that going to get in the way when they're operating? But you take that off, you take your t-shirt off, um, they put it in like a little cupboard in the office um, and you, they put like a black gown on you. So don't worry about what you're wearing, but just worry for when you finish, do you want something that can just zip up? So I just wore my cardigan and didn't wear a t-shirt in the end. Um, yeah, after that, we, the guy, um, he give he, you have to take your trainers off. He gives you some slippers, um, and I was wearing jeans. I mean, just try and wear something that's comfortable because you're going to be lying on this bed for like quite a few hours. Um, I, I wore jeans because I wanted pockets so I could keep my wallet in it and my phone. Um, but yeah, so the first thing they did was I got on the bed, um, you have to lie back with your head right over the end because they do your beard first. So he basically did the painless anaesthetic and if you haven't read about this, it's basically like a stun gun sort of thing, but that sounds worse than what it is. It, it, it just kind of clicks and it sort of, it reminded me a bit of um, like one of those old potato guns that you used to get that it just sort of clicks and it, it doesn't hurt. It feels like someone's flicking you with their finger one after the other sort of thing or, or some people say it's like an elastic band being fired onto you. It's, it doesn't hurt, um, it was fine and they basically did that under all the way around under my beard and around there. That basically stuns your skin and it then when they inject the needles, it's supposed to reduce the pain by about 60%, but for me it pretty much reduced it fully. I didn't feel it at all. You could just feel a needle going in. And I wouldn't class it as pain, it's more just like a sting. Um, but yeah, because of the painless anaesthetic, um, it basically, because your skin's kind of stunned, it just doesn't feel it, it's just fine. Um, if that, that was one thing I was kind of nervous about, the pain and it is fine. If if that's the only thing that's putting you off, then I wouldn't let that put you off. Um, like I said, different people handle pain in different ways. What might be nothing to one person, another person could think it's really bad. Um, but I found it fine. Um, under the beard, it kind of healed straight away. It didn't even hurt the night I had it done. Um, so yeah, basically they then, once it's numb, they kind of, shave it even more with a sort of manual shaver then um, they start using the tool to take the grafts out I thought the tool was like just a manual sort of thing that they push in but it's more like an electric tool you can just feel something just touching your skin it kind of it just makes it like a little sort of whirring noise and they basically take loads of dots I don't know if you can see them for that um, but yeah because the hair started growing back already um, but they just take lots of little dots, which is what they'll be doing on the sides and the back later on as well. So they do your beard first, they take, they use this tool, then they use like tweezers and they've got like lots of Petri dishes, which like in a science lab at school sort of thing, um, and that's what they put all the graphs into I think. Um, so you're lying right back and then they do, um, then after you finish they put the head part back onto the bed um, and it's like one of those massage ones where you look down through a hole so you're resting your head and they sort of they did my right side first and then um, so yeah they they used the stun painless anesthetic thing again then they started putting the needles in and to be honest it really didn't hurt some parts of your head are more sensitive than others so some parts you could feel it, but it just felt like a little burning pain. It really didn't hurt. And they said it reduces it by 60%, the pain this anaesthetic. But to me, it was like, I was sort of thinking, you know, it really didn't hurt as much. I'd built it up so much in my mind as that it was going to be so bad, but it just wasn't at all. It was fine. 
Um, I felt quite relaxed. The other thing I forgot to say is they give you a pill when you first sit on the bed um, and a glass of water and that kind of relaxes you quite a lot. So that was good. Um, so yeah, but they start, They then start sort of putting the stun round and putting the needles in. And the only way I'd describe it is it just feels like your skin is getting about 10 times thicker than what it was. It felt like you had a metal helmet on or something like um, and you can kind of feel them working on it, but it just doesn't hurt because it's kind of right, it's just so numb. Um, so they do that. Um, so then they start using the, the little tool to take out the graphs and they, they dot them about so that, because if they, they basically, if they do it in too much in one area, that it's called over harvesting and you get like bald spots on the back and the, the sides. So yeah, um, that's, they, they, they're very skilled, the technicians, they basically dot them about so that you, you don't get too many in one go. Cause, but when they're taking the graphs out, obviously it doesn't grow back because they're taking it out. Um, and the graphs are like the sort of seeds of your hair. So when they take those out, obviously when your hair grows back, it kind of just covers over and it, it stops it. Um, the other thing I thought of is I had what's called FUE, um, hair transplant which is where they take the grafts out um, the older way of doing it was FUT which I wouldn't have fancied they basically cut a big chunk of your skin out around the back and then they pull the scalp back and stitch it up and you'd have a big scar across the back they don't tend to do that method as much now um, so FUE is the one that I had there's also things like sapphire FUE and I'd never even heard of these till the last few weeks and basically it's just gimmicky, it's just the metal they use on the tool and it doesn't really, it's just because there's so many competing places they just use different names to try and impress you but um, I just had the standard FUE um, and it's fine. So they've removed all the hairs from the right side, the graphs, um, and then you, so, uh, another person came in and they start picking them out and then the other person starts taking them out of the back of your head your line and your stomach of course and then the other person comes around and starts taking them. so it's basically two working at a time one's taking them out and one's collecting them with the tweezers um, so they do this this takes quite a few hours um, they put like music videos on they had like a TV above my head um, in the background which was quite nice it's quite relaxing um, so I did that and then after that they sort of said they they constantly um, speak to you they, they can speak a, a little English and they were fine they're just saying are, are you fine any pain you know they were I've read stories where people saying oh they don't wear gloves that didn't happen with me they had gloves on all the time they had scrubs on they had um, those croc style shoes that they wear in hospitals uh, they were completely professional I've heard people saying oh they talk on in Turkish or whatever but if you were in a job day in day out doing this then yeah you probably would talk to your colleagues uh, most of the time I think they were talking about what they were actually doing on the job um, people were saying oh they've had heard stories where people were using mobiles and stuff that just didn't happen at all one of the technician's mobile rang and she just apologized straight away and switched it it was over on the side she switched it off um, and again changed her gloves straight away um, everything was completely spotlessly clean um, the hospitals are probably a lot more modern than what the ones are in England um, I felt completely comfortable with all of that um, by the way I'm not being paid at all to any by anyone to do this video I'm just doing it to try and help people because I was nervous about having it done I just wanted to share my experience um, like I said other hospitals include the pain list thing for free um, others might do things in different orders or it might be completely different I don't know I can only speak from my experience um, so yeah we had after all the graphs have been taken they then said um, do you want a bite to eat so I I needed to go to the toilet anyway so I quickly stood up and they walked with you to the toilet which is just a couple of meters away um, so yeah then they put this sort of hair um, hat thing on you while you go into the toilet and you sort of come back out 
and they got me like a little drink, fruit drink, and like a baguette sort of thing. Um, so I ate that, and then after that, lied back down, um, and Dr. Sinek, um, he'd already come in once just to check I was okay earlier on when they were doing the grass, and he just patted me on the back because um, I was, sort of had my head down on my stomach. Um, and then, yeah, he came in, he, they put a thing over your eyes, like a dressing. Um, first of all, they put a dressing over your beard area to stop it bleeding. Um, and they put, um, it kind of goes around your ears, like elasticated string stuff to hold it in place. Then Dr. Sinek um, came in, yeah, and he said, I'm, he pulled the sort of eye patch up so that I could see it was him. And he said, I'm just here to do your channels. He said, you've done the most uh, painful bit, like the grafts um, and the injections, which I didn't find painful at all anyway. Um, so yeah, he starts doing the the channels. He said, you know, you, you'll feel just like someone sort of touching your head basically. So, because they put the eye things on, you can't actually see it, what well, they're doing, but you can just feel like someone's sort of touching your head with, um, I think they use a special tool, like scissors sort of tool, just to make the canals, which are the incisions that the grafts are gonna go into. So obviously your head's sort of still got the drawing, the black stuff on it, so they, they know where exactly where to put the holes. Um, but yeah, they do different packages where you can have just the technicians doing it all, or you can pay for the doctor. I paid, um, in my package it already included the doctor, and I just reminded him when I first checked in in the morning, said to him, you're definitely doing the channels, aren't you? And he said, yeah. So yeah, he pops in, does those. That took probably about half an hour. Um, for him to put all the holes across and at that point I didn't even realize they'd numbed the back of my head um, at the top because I thought they'd just done the front but no they'd done the back as well so he did all of the channels um, then after that he did um, he left again and the other guys I think they were out they'd had a bite to eat they came back in and that's when they started putting all the um, graphs back in um, as far as I know, grafts, each one can have between one and five hairs, I think it is. Um, so these are like the seeds, basically, that they're planting um, into your um, head um, where all the channels have been opened. So, yeah, they started doing doing that. They started at the front and kind of worked back. Um, I think if you're very bald on top you may need two transplants one a year later um, they always start at the front because they want you to have a good hairline at the front so it looks good um, and then sort of what's left over they put towards the back um, so yeah they start putting those in and it at the front it was fine as they were getting towards the back it was starting to get a I could feel the anaesthetic wearing off a bit, but it didn't really hurt. It just felt a bit sore, um, and they they just say they just keep saying, "Are you in pain?" And if you say, "Yeah," they say, "Well, I'll just put another injection." In. So by the time the injections had started wearing off, they just put I think two more in at the back. Um, overall, you do get quite a few injections, but like I said, I just didn't feel hardly anything from them. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't let that put you off at all. Um, so, yeah, they put, they put all the grafts in, um, and they they kept spraying water because I think it helps open the channels, or it was I don't know why they it, they just kept spraying water all the time. I think it was to, and obviously you bleed a bit, so they keep wiping um, to make sure you're not, so they can see what they're doing basically. Um, but yeah, so when it had all finished, um, I got there. They picked me up at 7.45 in the morning, got to the hospital about 8, and it was probably, by the time I was finished, it was 5 p.m. So it was quite a long day. Um, and yeah, you go, when you finished, you they help you put your clothes back on. Um, I went down to pick my trainers up, and they said, no, no, you've got to sit down and put your on, keep your head up. Um, and oh yeah, the PRP stuff they did when I was having the grafts put in, they just inject it, you can't even feel it, it's just a little bit of blood um, that they've taken from you earlier, I think it's the plasma or something they put back in because it's supposed to help your hair grow. Um, so they do that. So then I went back downstairs. Um, after it, well actually, no, before I went back downstairs, you go into the office 
Um, they give you another sandwich to eat um, and another drink. Um, and then they start going through the pills. And there's a lot of pills. I'll just get some of them. Um, so you get like these sort of pills. Um, there's loads of them. And what they do is they number them, the boxes. They just write on them. I don't know if that's in focus. Um, and then you get like a folder like this and in the folder it basically goes through it's got like the six different pills and it tells you which ones which um, how many you need to take and when you take them you don't take them the day you have it done you start the following day and inside the folder at the top there was um, another pill stapled up there which they forgot to tell me about but I just watched that them when I got back to the hotel and it apparently was a sleeping pill. Uh, they give you six painkillers which you can take. I took one before I went to bed and I took, I didn't take any more, I didn't need them. Um, they said only take them once every six hours if you need to. But the pills, like one's blood thinning I think, um, one's um, just anti-redness and there's some others and they tell you what they are but you sort of forget because you've been going through quite a lot um, but you don't take any the day you have the operation you start the following day after breakfast um, which is fine um, so yeah after that oh the other thing they give you this, this scar stuff that if you've had it done under the beard um, so you go home they put dressings on um, on just the areas where they've taken the grafts at the back and the sides and obviously you've got the one on your beard still um, but yeah after that you go back in the taxi back to the hospital sorry back to the hotel um, and then I just sort of was getting a bit hungry again so I had dinner um, the hotel are fine with you going in the restaurant with all your bandages on and everything um, Towards the evening, I was getting a bit tired and I took the sleeping pill and one of the painkillers because I was a little bit sore, but it wasn't really that bad. Your head still feels quite numb. So, yeah, I, I, the other thing is, I, they said sleep on your back, don't sleep on your sides. And I can't just sleep on my back, I'd be turning over. So I just put some two pillows behind me. They give you like a blow up um, inflatable uh, neck wrist. I'd already taken one with me that I bought in the UK. So I had the one I bought in the UK and I also had one that I put on that they gave me. So I had two. Um, and yeah, just sort of sat up and watched TV in the hotel and dozed off to sleep, which was quite good. I had a really good night's sleep actually. Um, so yeah, did that. Next morning, they, they tell you the night before when they're gonna pick you up. If you're unsure about anything, you can just WhatsApp them. They get back to you straight away. So yeah, I had um, breakfast the following morning, got up about eight. Um, they picked me up from the hotel at 10, and this time there were some other guys as well, as about five other guys. Um, they drive you back up, it's not to the hospital, it's like an office across the road. So you go in there, and then they take the dressings off and sort of clean you up again. And during the operation they take photos, and then after, when you're having the dressings removed, they clean you up and you have more photos. Um, then the doctor comes over and he takes you into the office, sort of inspects you, makes sure you look alright and sort of said you're feeling okay and everything and yeah I was fine. Um, they also, when they clean you up they put this headband on. This is to stop the swelling from going down your face because otherwise you can get like puffy eyes and stuff like that. Now I'll show you what it looks like and it looks quite dodgy but you basically get this line where it's kind of pulling into you, keeping all of... Because the other thing I forgot to mention is they put... When they do the injections, they inject, but they also have to put some solution. It's kind of like water and stuff, but it kind of expands your scalp. Um, I think it makes it easier for them to put the grafts in or take the grafts out or whatever. Um, but yeah, your head does get kind of swollen at the top. So you, they told me to keep this headband on for two days. So they put it on for yesterday, so I'm going to keep it on until tomorrow. Um, and they explain to you how to do your first wash. Now some people opt 
to pay for another night in the hotel and then they'll do the first wash for you so I could have stayed till today and had the first wash done there's videos on YouTube the doctor's done of how to do your first wash so you use like foam stuff that you put on top on the um, recipient area that stays on for 30 minutes you can't use a shower or anything like that because it's too powerful you have to just get warm water not cold or hot and just pour it over I've not done this yet so I'm going to be doing this today because um, they want the scabs off as soon as possible um, they don't want you to you get scabs uh, mine are sort of into form now but because I that confused me because I thought you know if you cut your arm or your leg you're always told to leave scabs and let it heal itself with hairs it's different I think they can ingrow or um, they basically just want you to try and massage them off but the first few days the first seven days you have to use this stuff like this like foam on top um, it's really sort of goes easy on your head um, and they give you this shampoo stuff that's really sort of I think it's kind of like baby shampoo that um, for the the donor area around the sides and the back so you you can wash that um, but you I think the first day you just put it on you don't even touch it that much and then you use like a jug or a bottle of warm water and just pour it to get the the um, the stuff off that you put on top of your head the, it's like mousse sort of stuff um, but the shampoo I think you can use on the sides and the back um, but yeah after a week um, you can use I think you, you have to sort of pat it with just the palms of your hands um, and then after a week I think you have to sort of massage it a little bit more to try and get the scabs off um, I think you use the shampoo as well from the day two as well as this foam stuff but the foam stuff goes on first for 30 minutes and then you leave it um, but your doctor will obviously advise you on what they recommend um, but yeah the sides and the back where they take the grass from can get quite itchy so they they can give you an aloe vera spray thing um, they sell you, they do like a package, it was 200 euros and it contains biotin, saw palmetto, vitamins and more shampoo, it's a six month supply. Um, I've already been buying stuff off Amazon because I've been taking biotin and saw palmetto for about a year now. So I just, I'd run out of saw palmetto so I just bought some of that and I bought some of their vitamins. Um, the other thing I bought was, when I got to the airport I bought some of this stuff called Expecia which is basically saw palmetto and vitamins and biotin all in one um, there's another drug you can take called finasteride which is supposed to stop you from losing hair um, it has got some side effects that happen to some people not all um, my clinic said that they can get it if we want it but they just recommend using the herbal stuff so that's what I'm going to be using um, so, but yeah, I mean, you can do your own research on finasteride and it's up to you if you wanted to take it or not. Um, but yeah, so after that, the other thing they give you is this hat. It's like a sort of fisherman's hat. So if you go out and it's rain or wind, and like when I got back to Heathrow, it was chucking it down, um, you have to sort of protect the hair by, and for the first month at least, um, keep out the sun um, and you can wear that hat um, the doctor said to me just wear that one for a week and after that you can go back to wearing a baseball cap if you want I'll probably just keep that one for now because it's really light on your head it just looks a bit stupid but you you know you want to protect your investment basically you've spent a lot of money on it um, but yeah so after that we went from there back to the hotel, um, checked out, I think it was midday, and then sat around for two hours, and then the taxi came and picked me up. Um, again, this time it was just me and my girlfriend. Took us back to the airport. Um, again, at the airport, you have to go through metal detectors just to get into the airport and put your bags through all the scanners before you even go through security. Then I bought some of those Expedia pills because they were like about £12.60 a box, I think it was. Then you go um, through security, just wait for your flight. I made the mistake of not kind of watching the time enough and I went and had some stuff to eat. And then I looked at the board and it said last call for my flight and I thought, 
met. You're not supposed to exercise for a month, but I had to basically sprint to the gate, and then I got the wrong gate, um, and I was just kind of panicking a bit. Um, so yeah, finally got to the plane. I think we were last two on the plane, and found someone in my seat. Um, so there's quite a few empty seats, so they put us up the front, um, and then flew home, got back to England. When you're wearing this headband, it really feels just like you've got baseball cap on or something and your head's still a bit numb up top. And your head can stay numb for up to six months, um, but most people, I think, the feeling starts coming back quite quickly. Um, but yeah, you, I stood up in the plane and smacked my head a little bit. I think it was only on part that's not been done though, so it wasn't too bad and it didn't bleed or anything. I've heard stories of guys getting into taxis, um, forgetting and smacking their head and it bleeding and everything. Um, so yeah, that's how it all went. That was yesterday, I got back to Heathrow, got home, I was sort of thinking, would I be all right to drive? My girlfriend drove anyway, but yeah, you're, you're fine. Um, you really, I'd built it up in my head so much and it, it's really, I just wish I'd done it so, um, longer ago I wish I could have done it like two or three years ago um, obviously I don't know how my results are going to turn out but I really hope they're good I'll just see if I can show a bit more of it's kind of hard looking I think they're called peaks the bits um, sort of the sides where they sort of go back but it kind of goes in a circle back there then it comes forward and then it sort of goes around and the, the bit at the back sort of around the bald spot goes around but yeah it's still quite swollen and you'll notice the people who've had the painless one you get these red dots at the front that go along there which that is where they put the painless um, anaesthetic in and that's where they put all the needles in um, past that um, but yeah, like I said, the painless thing didn't really hurt. It's just like a flick, 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 flick. Um, but yeah, if I had to have it again, I probably wouldn't bother paying the 250 euros. I'd have it if it was free, obviously, but I wouldn't pay the 250. I'd just part with the needles going in and sting, stinging. Um, but yeah, a lot of the guys that had it done were a lot younger than me. I mean, there was guys in their 20s. I'm 43. Um, I thought I might as well get it done now because otherwise, you know, uh, I think you're supposed to sort of stop balding by the time you're 50 or something. I was reading, but you read so many different things, it can drive you mad. You, In the end, I just thought, if I don't do it, I'm never going to do it, so I'm, I might as well. And if I didn't do it, I'd keep thinking, should I have done it? And, you know, would it have made me better? And um, would I have been happier? Because um, I hated having a bald spot, I have to admit. Um, and I told everyone at work because I thought, you know, I'd rather than get any jokes out of the way to begin with. Um, but most of them are all really supportive. Um, the ones you find kind of joke more sort of, it's usually the bald people. Um, and sometimes I think maybe it's a little bit of jealousy. Maybe they'd like to have it done, but they don't for some reason. Um, but yeah, I can only speak about my experience and it was great. It, you know, if I need a second one in a few years' time and I can afford it, then I'd, without hesitation, go for it. It's so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, just make sure you've got a phone that's charged and you've got WhatsApp, because they love WhatsApp out there, um, you, and it's so easy. Um, the other thing was, I'm with three, and using it abroad, it was quite expensive. So the hotel had really good Wi-Fi, so what I did was just turn roaming off. Um, three are really good, they cover so many countries including USA and Australia and you can use all your UK allowance but unfortunately Turkey they didn't. So yeah I turned roaming off and then when I got, you don't need your phone on anyway till you get to the hotel and then you go on their Wi-Fi and they had really good Wi-Fi. Um, so yeah you just use WhatsApp and it uses the hotel Wi-Fi so yeah um, that was fine as well. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions at all, just leave me a comment. Um, I make loads of videos about flights and travel, cruises, um, that sort of thing. So um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, 
Um, if you've got any questions, just ask. Um, mine altogether, when I booked it, it was 1,990 euros for the operation, which had included the two nights in the hotel, the breakfast, all the transfers. The only extra I had to pay was my flight, which was 139 pounds. So I think 1,990 came out at the moment, because that's the other thing, you don't pay for it till the day of your operation. It, um, it was £1,780 or £1,800, it came out around about that with the current exchange rate. Plus I had to pay the €250 Euros, um, for the pain list which was probably about £220 on top of that. So altogether it's, you're looking around about two grand where I went. There are cheaper places out there, um, like I said I just went because I saw some of the 12 month reviews on the Hair Loss Crusaders website. I definitely recommend you join up to that on Facebook. It's brilliant. You can ask questions. Um, it is run by QNO Medical, that site, but they are really good. Um, and yeah, all the guys on there, just people who've had it done, people who are thinking of having it done, they're really good. If I hadn't seen that website, I probably still would never have had it done because I wouldn't have. I just wouldn't have trusted it. I'd have been worrying, thinking. You know, going out to another country, having something done like this. But when you get out there, you just see how many people are having it done all the time. Get back to the airport. I mean, on our flight, it was a BA flight. A lot of guys take Turkish Airlines because you get free food. On the BA flight, they don't give you food, which is you might as well buy something before you get on the flight because it was cheaper. Um, yeah, it's about three and a half hours. And yeah, that is a bit of a downer. They don't give you any food. You can buy it on the flight. Um, but yeah, there are three guys, I think. And when I was getting off, the captain comes out to say goodbye. And he was saying to me, what's this thing with all these headbands? He goes, whenever I'm out fly to Turkey, it's all these guys wearing headbands. Is it like some kind of craze? And I said, no, I've had a hair transplant. And he really just didn't understand. Um, I was trying to explain that it's a hell of a lot cheaper out there than what it is in, in the UK. Um, but yeah, if you've got any kind of questions, just ask in the comments section below. Um, I think you probably need a Gmail account um, to log in to be able to do that. But just ask um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, if you want to subscribe, I'm going to try and do some more videos. I've sort of got my first hair wash I'm going to do today. Um, yeah, and hopefully do some more videos as hopefully the hair starts growing. For the first three months, you don't see that much growth, and what you get is called shock loss. Most people get it, not all. Um, so basically, when the hair starts growing, it will then fall out. So, and some of your good hair that hasn't been transplanted can fall out as well. After this, in the few months after that, that is when it should start growing, and you should start seeing the results. And it takes about a year to see basically what sort of results you're going to get. Um, and so I think the crown at the back is the, the worst place um, and that can take up to 18 months. Um, so hopefully I'll get good results. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make some more videos hopefully to see how it goes. So far I haven't had any swelling on the face, it's just at the top still, so I'll keep my band on tomorrow. The other thing they told me is don't take the band off, move it upwards, move it down and then just get some scissors and cut it off when you need to finally take it off. But I'm going to leave it because I don't want the swelling going down to my eyes at the moment. So, um, yeah, so if you're thinking of having it done and you've got any questions, just ask. Um, but yeah, check out. I should be making some more videos at some point in the future when it's started growing, hopefully. Cheers. Bye.